Tesla Solar one year later. Welcome back to the Cobra Pit, whether you're a longtime viewer or if you're a newer subscriber like William Boone, I see you. I appreciate every single one of you. I am really blown away by all of you who've used my referral link to order your solar panels or your solar roof from Tesla. I started this channel to help people and when someone uses my referral link, I really feel like I'm doing that. So it truly is rewarding. So thank you so much. We do benefit from it. We both benefit from it. You get $300 if you order your solar panels and I think you get $500 if you order a solar roof. So I, it, it is truly rewarding in more ways than one. So thank you once again. So to give you a quick rundown, I ordered my solar panels July 24th of 2020 and they actually showed up on September 24th to install it. It took them about two days to do so. So after they installed it, two weeks later, we had an inspector come and check it and the inspector included someone from the utility, someone from Tesla. They all came and looked at it and then my PTO date or permission to operate date was November 18th. So from ordering in July, actually turning it on November 18th, that, that does take some time. And they also said with the shortages going on right now that it may take a little bit longer to go through the whole process, but you know, your mileage may vary. So I installed the 12.28 kilowatt system of 36 panels. They don't offer that exact uh, system anymore. And uh, prices have gone up a little bit, but they still, you know, match the lowest price. They still have that low price guarantee on their website. Now, if you wanted reasons why you might consider Tesla Solar over any other solar companies, the link is up there. So you could click that and also it'll be in the description. So my estimated annual production with the 36 panels is 20,030 kilowatt hours. And after one year, after one year, I got... 19,948, which is pretty darn accurate, especially with the weather being so unpredictable, you know, rain, cloudy days and things like that. That's pretty close. So I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, the summer months generated much more solar energy because of the sun's trajectory is a lot higher in the sky. And in the winter, you know, there's less sunlight, but the yearly average is pretty accurate. But I know you all want to know about my bill, my bill over a year. Let me start by saying it's difficult to compare your projective cost versus mine. Um, everybody's going to pay for their solar panels differently. You may finance it. Um, you may finance it through different companies. You'll have a different interest rate, different term, different things like that you have to factor in. It also depends on how your local utility handles the rates, if they offer net metering or how they handle uh, customers with solar panels. We have net metering for our utility, which is Southern California Edison. And net metering is you getting credit for the extra energy that you generate and you return it to the grid. Not only do we have net metering, we must also enroll in a time of usage plan, which means that the rates change depending on the time of day. Now this is intended to help relieve pressure on the grid at peak hours, which allows lower rates late at night when not too many people are using things. The highest rates are typically when people get home from work and many people are at home and that's when the grid is hit the hardest. But we usually charge our cars at the lowest rate time, which is usually after nine, 10 o'clock at night. So how much did I pay? Now remember, we charged two electric vehicles. We ran the air conditioning all summer long, which we never did before solar. We would actually wait until nighttime to use it. I know it was brutal during the day, but since we had the solar panels, we live uh, a lot more comfortably. So let me break it down. We have an annual settlement plan that has us look at the end of the year to determine how much money we owe or if the utility owes us. At the end of the year, we owe $191. Now, each month we needed to pay fees, which they label as non-bypassable charges that go to aid in special programs and things of that nature. So the total of all the fees over the 12 months ended up being $606.37. So if you add the $191, that ended up being $797 for the year. That's how much we paid all year long, $797. Remember, we're not including the solar panels, the cost of the solar panels. I'm just talking about my electricity bill. 
Now that may sound expensive, but let's remember, I don't pay for any gas in my vehicles. None at all. And air conditioning. <laughs> That's big. Like we used to suffer. So no gas and air conditioning whenever we wanted it. Even if I did factor in the cost of my solar panels, that would bring the total to about $320 a month, which is still less than electricity and gas with, without the solar panels. So let's take a look at how much I paid the year before to get a little comparison. From November 2020 back to March 2020, and that's where my utilities website stopped. I couldn't go back any further to see, you know, how much I paid in January, February, uh, and December. Um, and I did look at my, 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 my bank statement, but it, it just got too much. So I'll just break it down for those months from March to November 2020. So I paid $2,282.08. Now that's only nine months. So five out of those months, I still had a gas powered vehicle. So we're definitely paying less and our payback period or what we would call our break even period from buying the panels is about five and a half years. So after those five and a half years, we won't be factoring the cost of the solar panels anymore. So remember all of your payments and things, they will vary. So now that we know I am saving money and even more after five and a half years, what kind of maintenance did I have to do in a year? So I noticed that our panels start to get dusty after we had quite a few fires here in Southern California. And I actually planned on going up there to clean them. So uh, I was a little nervous to climbing up there, but I said, you know what, I, I, I can do it. So I got everything ready and the weekend before it rained, right? So it rained right before I was going to go up there. And you know what? That rain cleaned them. Yeah, I did read online that, you know, the natural weather will take care of it, but we didn't have any rain for a while. So I did check on the app and it made a difference. That rain did clean them off. There was a slight gain in the generation of energy after, you know, the rain cleaned it. So I kind of got by the first year by rain taking care of it when it got kind of built up. But also when it did get dusty, the generation didn't drop too much. So um, I heard of professional cleaners. And if you do have to get yours clean because of lack of rain and things like that, I hear it can get pricey. But for the first year, zero maintenance. So moving forward, I do want to get a power wall eventually, uh, maybe two, I don't know, but it's going to be kind of challenging with Tesla's new guidelines and chip shortages. But you know what they say, where there's a will, there's a way, or when there's a will, there's a way. I mean, if I try hard enough, I could probably get one, right? That, that's, what it, that's what it boils down to. A power wall or two will help during the peak hours, right when the sun is setting and everyone is home. We can run our electricity off of it and save grid usage even more so. We don't have many blackouts in our area, so I would primarily use the power walls for that. So overall saving more money, but of course we have to factor in the cost of the power wall again and then find out our break even period after that. Now, if you're getting solar panels or a solar roof, I highly recommend you get the power walls right then and there if you can afford it, you know, one, maybe two, whatever they recommend. I wish I would have done it. I don't know. It was just, I don't know. I should have done it. You don't want to be like me and sit around hoping for a miracle. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with my purchase. I feel like we got it at the right time. They're still offering that government credit. So if you're thinking about doing it, you should uh, act pretty soon. This year, next year, you get a big, uh, big uh, federal credit. So when you get that credit, you can apply it towards the cost of your panels and it'll lower those payments or however you pay for it, right? I love looking at the app and seeing all the generation and how we're using it and how much energy we're using. And, you know, sometimes I can check from the app and see like, oh, it must be a cloudy day before I even open the windows, right? <laughs> so it is addicting looking at all the data. I'm a data person. The new updated ad gives you more information. It's all there. It's laid out for you. If you're a numbers nerd like me, then you'll have some fun to it. My wife even got into looking at the app and finding out how much energy we're using, how much we're generating and things like that. It's fun. And I can imagine with a power wall seeing when you're using it, how you're using it, things like that. But, but overall, I think I made a good choice. I think Tesla will be around for a while, um, hopefully knocking on wood. But um, I'm glad we got it. And the panels look good to me. If you're going to get a solar roof, I think those look the best. Uh, we weren't in the market for 
a new roof at the time so financially it didn't make sense but you know weigh your options think about it and if i was able to help you at all um i really appreciate a like and i'm going to give you much more information with my journey on getting a power wall and i will update you with the solar system so thanks for watching and don't forget cobra told you all right y'all